This week on Crunch Week, we're talking about BlackBerry being in play, Google's Easter eggs, and the Jump Tap acquisition. Hey there, I'm Colleen Taylor. I'm Greg Comparic. And I'm Anthony Ha. And welcome to a new episode of Crunch Week, where we talk about the most exciting stories from the past seven days here in the tech world. To kick it off, uh, BlackBerry, at the beginning of this week, uh, essentially said that it's exploring its strategic alternatives, which we all know kind of means that it's up for sale, it's in play, uh, so it's definitely just never a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think there was definitely a lot of leads that were like something to the effect of Bladbe BlackBerry, um, you know, sees the writing on the wall, essentially, that everyone else saw, you know, years ago. But. Right, right, and a lot of people this week are saying that BlackBerry should have done this a few years ago, that right now it's just too late, it's, they're not going to get the prices for the things that they have that they sh that they could have gotten even two or three years ago, that it's just, now it's just kind of a fire sale. What do you guys think? They've got their patents. I think that's easily the most valuable part of the company right now. I agree. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people are saying now, you know, BlackBerry, it's it's dead, it's worthless, but I don't think that's true. And as much right. as so many of us would like to see patent reform right now, patents are still very valuable. And Right. Well, it also seems like, I mean, I think that it, it's kind of, the other aspect of the story is just that I think at this point it's kind of only relevant to, well, I guess it depends on what, who buys the patents and what they do with them. But other than that, it's like mostly just relevant to like if you're like a BlackBerry like shareholder because it so, becomes so like irrelevant, I think, in a lot of ways to the like sort of broader like mobile and business landscape that it's just kind of like, oh, this is like sad, but like not like, it doesn't feel like it like changes that much. It just is like, oh, well, this is a thing that's been happening for a while and now it's really going to happen. There, there, is a, there is a small but And I think that's exaggerated, but I think that that's, you know. Right, right. This is a small but fervent group of BlackBerry lovers who, who just love their Blackberries. And right now, I, this week, I was talking to some people. I got to appear on CNBC and talk a bit about BlackBerry. And of course, the in entire CNBC audience and all the anchors there and stuff, they love their Blackberries. It's a very financial world kind of thing. Um, my mom loves her BlackBerry. She likes to type with her thumbs. And of course, BlackBerry owns the patent on sort of <laughs> typing with your thumbs or something like that, <laughs> like thumb typing technology. Right. They have this treasure trove of patents. but. There is one uh, secure, they have some great things in security. Uh, there's a technology called elliptical curve cryptography, which is kind of the future of cryptography. This is what the NSA uses to make sure it has all uh, secure government uh, communications. And BlackBerry has a wholly owned subsidiary that owns all of the patents around that. Mm -hmm. And so the NSA licensed this. I, I believe that even Google licenses this for some of their secure communications. So I, I agree that there's some really valuable patents there. And I, I'm excited to see who the elliptic curve cryptography uh, IP goes to. I think that'll be one of the highest. Right, although it, it's with, with anything with patents, it's always kind of an interesting question. Like, well, like, like I said, you know, who, what are they actually going to do with it? Are they actually going like, to incorporate it into the technology? Or is it just you know, like a defensive thing or you know, just a you know, litigious thing? One person I was talking to this week was being very uh, pie in the sky and hoping that some big company would acquire it and then open source it because elliptic curve cryptography uh, is a is a really great security uh, technology and one company shouldn't be hogging it. It should be available more widely uh, without needing to license it for extra extraordinary amounts of money. But that would be like the ideal thing right. for someone to acquire it, spend a bunch of money and then set it free. That would be like the charitable thing. Yeah. Anyway, BlackBerry. So what, what else? Google? Google. Yeah, Google had a bunch of Easter eggs this week. Those are pretty cool. Um, they just, got just to start, explain to all the people <laughs> what an Easter egg an is. An Easter egg is a hidden software feature that isn't really, it's not a button on the page. It's, it's, it's not something that's immediately obvious. But if you're, you're poking around in the source code or if someone that works at the company tells you to you know, punch in this code, it'll do something cool. Um, that's, it's kind of like a cheat code for a piece of software. Um, and so this last week was Google's or YouTube's Geek Week, which is they just focused on a bunch of geeky videos and then focused on video game trailers and geeky announcements and stuff like that. And as part of that, they had a bunch of little Easter egg hidden in there. Like if you typed uh, 1980, it turned the whole page into like this crazy missile command game. Um, if you typed in 1337, it, it changed all the uh, the text on the page to be in leet speak, so it you know, swapped out numbers uh, in, in place of letters. But the coolest one. Uh, at least to me, because uh, first of all, the, all the YouTube ones are gone now, which is a bummer. <laughs> but <laughs> it would have been great it, if you had seen yeah. them. <laughs> uh, but the coolest one, and it's still around, uh, is they hid the interior of the TARDIS on Google Maps. So the TARDIS is a thing from Doctor Who, the Doctor Who universe. It's the uh, the the vessel, the time machine that he flies around in and, and travels through space and time. Um, and what so does it stand for, Greg? 
time and relative dimensions in space. That's correct. Um. <laughs> I could see your lips moving <laughs> while he was saying <laughs> that. Wow, yeah, this is going to be really <laughs> embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the whole running gag on, on Doctor Who is that the inside of the TARDIS is much bigger than the outside. You know, and you, you never really get to see uh, the, the interior of the TARDIS from all these different angles. You never really get to explore it when you're watching the TV show. So Google found a, uh, a police box, which is what the TARDIS is in the TV show, and they made it so that if you click on it, when you're looking at it from a certain direction, you essentially jump into the TARDIS. And it's it's their, their classic street view thing, where you can you can look around a full 360 panorama, and you can you can click to, to jump over there. And it's, it's really geeky, but <laughs> I really liked it. Well, I feel like the other interesting thing about a lot of these Easter eggs is I think they illustrate how, you know, not that this is universally the case, but in a lot of cases that, you know, these tech companies are just super nerdy, you know, not just in the sort of programming engineering sense, but also in the pop cultural sense. And that, like, yeah. I remember, like, you know, like when I found out that, like, you know, when the Google Wave was announced and then, like, finding out that that was in, named after Firefly. And, like, I don't think officially it is, but, I mean, it was named <laughs> after Firefly. And, like, a lot of things like that. Or, like, I was talking to, like, a startup founder, and he was like, oh, it's called Neverwhere. And then I was like, so is, is it named after the Neil Gaiman? And I was like, uh, you weren't supposed to know that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I feel like I love that, like that sense that that's still a part of like the culture of these companies. Yeah. Um, it brings the humanity back to a lot of these things too. You use Google Maps for so long and it just becomes this map that is built by some dude somewhere. And then eventually uh, when they, they tuck in things like this, it's like, th this, is, this is my people. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is us building these. Yeah, and that was a hugely popular post. It's clearly not just, I mean, or at least like the geeky, nerdy. A uh, subsection of, of humanity is uh, very powerful because your post on these Easter eggs was one of our most viewed posts of the entire week. So it's a fun, like, summertime. It's also nice because uh, Whovians, which is what you call a Doctor Who fan, they're, they're <laughs> the nicest people on the entire internet. They can be eccentric. I'm a, a Whovian. I, can, I nerd out a little bit over Doctor Who sometimes. But some guy got into the comments and was like, Doctor Who fans are the worst, blah, blah, blah. And usually in any other, any, any other, ugh, any other subject, the fans of that show, it would just turn into this flame war, you know? And like, there were 10 people just saying, LOL, shut up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, there was no flame war, just right. immediately over, because they were the nicest people on the internet. That's I like nice. that that's, that counts as nice, but that is kind of, I mean, I think that's <laughs> Relative the correct, to the that's the, 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 internet, that's the really correct nice. response. And I mean, it's not like, you know, that kind of comment deserves a nice response. <laughs> right, right, and not everybody on the internet is so is so nice when they feel like they've been slighted, as we also learned in some news that we will not be talking about this week. <laughs> but um, <laughs> anyway, last thing, what was it? Oh, so uh, Millennial Media announced that they're going to be acquiring uh, Jump Tap. So it's two, two mobile ad companies, um, and I think the, the combined the, the combined cat. It's mostly a stock deal. Combined uh, value of cash and stock is going to be about two hundred thirty million, which for a company that raised you know more than a hundred million dollars is not a really great return. I think some people had thought maybe they were going to you know, go public or, you know, I think there's, there's sort of a lot of um, questions kind of around, you know, and I think Millennial, since going, Millennial Media is itself a public company, so like, and I, I think like it hasn't done that well since its IPO. So I think there's sort of this combined sense of just like, oh man, this kind of sucks. <laughs> it's I like mean, mediocre <laughs> merger, right? Well, it's weird. It's not like I don't, I don't want to like over, overstate the extent to which that. I mean, there was a lot of people when I, you know, wrote the article, was like, oh, this is great news for the space, and I was just kind of like, well, I don't know if that's entirely true. And I mean, again, you know, I don't. It's, it's not like a catas. It wasn't like a fire. You know, it was like it was, it was, it was acquired for more money than it had raised, but not. You know, substantially more. So it was. It was just like I think a, underwhelming. Maybe that's the best word for it. Is there some sort of reason that you think this is? Is it be that Jump Tap didn't deliver on its promise, or overall the space is a little uh, lackluster? I think it's just yeah. It's taken you know longer I think to take off than people expected. Um, and and so you know that that there there have been successful companies that have been successful sort of on a smaller level, but no one sort of had that kind of mass. You know, like a Google. I mean, that's kind of setting a really high bar, but like a Google level success. Um, and and so I think that there's and and. I I think it's also just this, there's just a lot of sort of undifferentiated technology right now, and mm. so a lot of companies that are kind of the same. And I think that that at a certain point you can't really, you know, like it's it's hard for those companies to really take off. I mean, certainly that that happens, but I think it's they're all kind of having a harder time. Now you're our like advertising expert here. Expert, yeah. <laughs> when you talk to all these people about the mobile advertising space, right? What is everybody looking for? I mean, I think it's it's a lot of it is about sort of um, data and like results that like it's it's. You know, it's all. Every, I think what on the startup side, everyone's really excited is is this idea that you know br that the the advertisers really want to reach these specific audiences, and I think there are a lot of challenges to targeting on mobile. And I mean, that's where you get a lot of this back and forth about like privacy and things like that, and, and UDIDs, and and I think that there's sort of people trying to come up with different ways for for you know getting the best targeting. And I think 
there's some hope that that's going to be a big level. I think the other issue is just you know sort of the um, the formats because I mean I mean if you look on your phone right you get you see a banner it's like always kind of ugly and dinky and doesn't really like belong there and I think that the, what's exciting is I think that's that's great actually because that pushes people to try to actually do more interesting things with advertising and and you look at like Facebook obviously like really surprised everyone and had like really great you know like res mobile results because I think they've done really interesting things on the mobile advertising side. I'm not sure I don't necessarily think that means everyone loves seeing those ads in their feeds, but I think at least that's an interesting direction. And I think, but the problem is that all that stuff I think is still very early. And so to actually start seeing those results, like you know, in, in sort of a, in a sort of a bigger way, like in a way that like a public that the public markets would care about, is I think a ways off. Right, right. Because it's not just one company that's licensing this technology. It's that you know, Twitter's kind of getting it right, and Facebook's kind of getting it right. But it's not one sort of slam dunk like double click or something like right, this. Right, right, right. I mean, and, and then you know, I think the the good. I think some other people have suggested that you know, all, the other aspect is. Just they're companies that are probably doing better, but they're not the ones necessarily that felt the need to kind of go public right away mm -hmm. or, or to get acquired. Okay. Well, hopefully everyone can start making more money soon, uh, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Money. Yeah, money. Woo. Anyway, that is all for Country Week this week. Thanks for tuning in, and check back next week.